In this session, you will get a general introduction to the concept of co-creation in relation to research and innovation. We will start off by briefly explaining what co-creation is and how it has been and is being used in different contexts. Hereafter, we will go into how we defined and developed a methodology for co-creation in the GoNano project. Co-creation is a concept that has been widely used across many contexts. One of the earliest descriptions of co-creation comes from work on user innovation by Eric von Hippel, where co-creation implies participation of end users in a development trajectory in a firm. The involvement of various actors in innovation processes is for instance advanced in theories on open innovation and has been developed in a number of forms and contexts, including user innovation, open source innovation, household sector innovation, crowdsourcing, and free innovation, among others. What is common to all these concepts is the involvement of users and consumers in innovation activities in various degrees and manners. Furthermore, it is possible to make a distinction between co-creation as understood and used in a business context and co-creation or co-production as used interchangeably and developed in the context of the public sector. In a business context, Co-creation sees end users take over some of the activities of production and add value to product development by sharing their experiences with the use of products and services. It can provide a firm with a competitive advantage, for instance by lowering design and production costs and or help ensuring that the final product is desirable. In a business context, co-creation can be defined as the joint creation of value by the company and the customer allowing the customer to co-construct the service experience to suit their context. Unilever, IKEA, Heineken, Lego and Coca-Cola are examples of businesses that use co-creation to develop their products and customer experiences. Lego has, for instance, both allowed customers to submit their product ideas and ask them to help Lego choose which products to go forward with by voting. In the public sector, Co-creation has been advanced as a concept for involving citizens, which can be viewed as their end users, in social innovation processes. Social innovation can be understood as creation of long-lasting outcomes that aim to address societal needs by fundamentally changing the relationships, positions and rules between the involved stakeholders through an open process of participation, exchange and collaboration with relevant stakeholders, including end users, thereby crossing organizational boundaries and jurisdictions. It is important to understand that in co-creation, participation is understood as active involvement in the development of an innovation trajectory. Citizen participation in co-creation therefore implies that citizens are active co-developers of priorities, expectations and concerns in an innovation trajectory. In the GoNano project, we aim to enable co-creation between citizens, civil society organizations, industry, researchers and policymakers across Europe to align future nanotechnologies with societal needs and concerns. We therefore adopted the following definition of co-creation. Co-creation activities enable productive collaborations between researchers and societal stakeholders over longer timeframes focusing on specific nanotechnology research lines, leading to tangible outcomes such as new research avenues, proposal, product or prototype. Co-creation can thus be understood as a collaborative development of new value together with various stakeholders. Co-creation is a form of collaborative innovation where ideas are shared and improved together. The developed methodology for the co-creation process in GoNano builds on the framework of responsible research and innovation and the mobilization and mutual learning scheme. Conceptually, the GoNano co-creation methodology has the RRI concept at the center of its construction. RRI has four dimensions which together compose a process of anticipating risks and opportunities, ensuring reflection on the consequences of your activities, doing that by engaging multi-actors who can provide knowledge, insights into needs, concerns, norms and values at play or give ideas to proper action 
and lastly, taking action and executing proper responsiveness. All four RRI dimensions are put at play in the methodology of GoNano to a degree, so that GoNano is RRI in action. Nanotechnology's research is ultimately connected with the emergence of RRI as a governance paradigm. The EU Code of Conduct for Responsible Nanoscience and Nanotechnologies, with its emphasis on responsible development and responsible research, was a response to the uncertainties of risks and the novelty of nanotechnology at the policy and institutional level. The code was a precursor to the idea of RRI as a policy agenda and general concept for governance of research and innovation. Nanotechnology is therefore one of the first science and technology research area where practitioners have also experimented with the implementation and development of RRI in science and technology research in practice. As a concept, RRI is inherently normative when it comes to the outcomes it aims to achieve and the processes it would like to facilitate. In terms of processes, the goals are to be transparent and interactive, to be diverse and inclusive, to be anticipative and reflective, to be open and transparent, to be responsive and adaptive to change, to take into account and build in ethics, gender, public engagement, open access and science education. In terms of outcomes, the goals are research and innovation products and processes that are acceptable, sustainable, and socially desirable. Societal actors and innovators mutually responsive to each other. Research and innovation, which is aligned to societal values. Responsible research and innovation leads to empowered, responsible actors across our research and innovation systems. In the GONANA project, we took the RRI framework as orientation points for designing our co-creation process. In addition to the RRI framework, we also look for the mobilization and mutual learning scheme. The MML scheme contains a number of recommendations for working in an MML way that were implemented in the GONANO co-creation methodology. They are to involve citizens and civil society organizations at different stages of research, making accessible the various types of knowledge concerned, capacity building and training, exploring ethical issues, developing expertise in support of policymaking, analyzing how gender issues intervene, promoting the participation of young people, promoting guidelines for responsible research and innovation. Activities may take place at local, regional or national level and must have a European dimension. In the GoNano project, the combination of our definition of co-creation and incorporation of the RI framework and the MML scheme led us to design a methodology for a co-creation process that aims to include a diverse group of actors from research, industry and policy to civil society organizations and lay citizens, is adapted to consider gender, cultural values and differences in communication traditions, and ask the participants to reflect on these conditions for development of future nanotechnology research and innovation, is open and transparent, and where participants can continuously follow the steps of the co-creation process, as well as see how their input is used in the co-creation process, is interactive, both in its methods as well as the tool it utilizes for participants and the project to stay connected in the ongoing dialogue. The outcomes of the co-creation process itself should be the development of concrete product suggestions that are judged as acceptable, sustainable and socially desirable by the participants in the co-creation process, aligned to societal values, solutions to societal challenges in nanotechnology research and innovation for food, health and energy, that the various participating actors are mutually responsive to each other and feel empowered to contribute to the future development of frameworks of governing research and innovation processes that are built on the GoNano approach. These overall outcomes were to be developed in a continuous and iterative co-creation process with four main steps. First, citizen workshops to understand citizens' needs, concerns, and messages regarding the development and implementation of future nanotechnology. Second, 
workshops with professional stakeholders to develop research lines and first suggestions for adaptable product designs and recommendations for their practical development. Third, an online consultation to validate and gain further input on the product designs. Fourth and final step, workshops with professional stakeholders to finalize the product designs. In the Gonella project, we ran three co-creation pilot studies using our methodology for co-creation to demonstrate and test the potential of its approach to research and innovation. One on the future of nanotechnology and health in the Netherlands, one on the future of nanotechnology and energy in Spain, and one on the future of nanotechnology and food in the Czech Republic. Now you have gotten a general introduction to the concept of co-creation and an overall presentation on the Go Nano methodology. In the next two sessions, we'll go more in depth with what can be achieved through co-creation and have a look at the different types of stakeholders you can involve in your co-creation project.